I'm counting on you boys. You ready? I'm always ready, Mr. Blank. We're always ready. We're the Falcons. We're always ready. All right, and free agency season starts now. All right, let's do this. All right, so, uh, oh, I don't have a pen. Oh, I don't even know what a free agent is. What, what, Mr. Blank, what's a free agent? What's going on, Falcons fans? Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown. And if you're new here, welcome. So the much anticipated video is finally here. The free agents the Atlanta Falcons should consider picking up in the 2022 offseason. Now, before we get started, there are a lot of things to go over. So please just bear with me here. The first thing is, while I do still believe cap space is a myth and everyone, in my humble opinion, I think is overreacting to the whole money situation the Falcons have, I also went with players that are expensive but are also quote unquote realistic for the Falcons to pick up. Like, you know, a Chandler Jones, technically the Falcons can afford him, but I don't see them realistically picking him up. So. I went with a player that, again, is expensive, but I think the Falcons would probably spend their money on. But I also didn't base this whole list off of just the money. I also based these off of good players that have a small little trait that I think the Falcons would like. For example, there might be a player that is good, but he also played with Arthur Smith and Dean Pease before, stuff like that. So this whole list really just consists of affordability or affordability. And then also a good player, of course, you need to have a good player in free agency. And then three, a small little trait that I think the Falcons might like. Um, another thing that I need to go over is if you have seen my video going over the Falcons' biggest needs over the 2022 offseason, I will kind of just go in order. Uh, first, I'll go over the pass rushers that I think we could get because pass rush was a big need. And then I also remember I went to offensive line after that, so I'll go over the offensive linemen that I think we could pick up. And then to the wide receivers, you get the idea. It all just kind of goes in order. And now the last thing that I wanted to go over that I feel is super, super important, and I am very, very happy I recorded this the day of the event instead of the day before, because I thought about recording this uh, yesterday instead of tonight, but I'm thankful I didn't. The Atlanta Falcons actually hired Ryan Pace uh, on their staff. And if you remember him, he was the former Bears general manager. And he's going to help the Falcons, you know, uh, pick up players in the offseason. Uh, that's all you really need to know, to be honest with you. But, um, of course, everyone's first reaction to this news was, oh, this is the dude that picked up Mitch Trubisky in the draft. And, oh, this is the guy that got Matt Nagy. And, of course, nowadays, everyone's always got to point to the negatives that someone does or something does because that's what people like to do. They like to look at the negatives. But in my opinion, I actually think that this was an excellent hire by the Falcons. And I think this will help us build a team that we would love to see uh, really soon or maybe even this year. I don't know, but definitely very soon. What about the good things that Ryan Pace has done? On offense, he got Allen Robinson. Pretty sure that worked out. If Justin Fields lives up to the hype, that was a pretty good pickup by Ryan Pace. And then on defense, of course, the blockbuster trade to get Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn was a good move. Getting Roquan Smith, he knows how to develop a defense. He was a huge reason the Bears had that elite defense in 2018. And oh yeah, the Falcons kind of need a defense. So Ryan Pace could not only just build a great defense, for the Falcons here, but when it comes to offense, yeah, he can kind of be a little hit or miss, but when he's on, he's on. He could get a great player, and a player that is not on this list, but I kind of wish I added him, was Allen Robinson. I don't know, because Falcons do need a receiver. We could pick up Allen Robinson, or just another great Bears player that might not even be a free agent right now, Khalil Mack, please. <clears throat> I hope he comes to Atlanta, but I have to point that out because I feel Ryan Pace uh, could be a good hire here for the Falcons. But anyway, onto the list. So the first player, and this seems to be a huge trending topic right now, Harold Landry from Tennessee. It seems like everyone's on board that they want this to happen, and I do too. I want Harold Landry on the Falcons too, because he's a good pass rusher, and he's worked with Arthur Smith and Dean Pease before. Uh, and it seems like he's progressing every single year. So 
Enough said on that, let's get Harold Landry. The next player on here, this is the only player that I feel is maybe a little uh, quote unquote expensive and unaffordable, but uh, Jason Pierre Paul from the Buccaneers. Uh, obviously, Grady Jarrett would love to have a veteran presence on this team, and well, he's a good pass rusher, and he is pretty familiar with the NFC South, so it'd be nice to have someone that can work around that Bucs offensive line that he had to work against in practice and against the Saints, because they have a pretty good offensive line, and uh, you never know if the Panthers uh, make things interesting in 2022, so it would be nice to kind of have him on the team, and not even just against the NFC South opponents, but just in general. Jason Pierre-Paul is a good player. And now we're gonna go on to the offensive line. I have two left guards. I have uh, Andrew Norwell from the Jaguars and Richie Incognito from the Raiders. And my explanation for both of these guys are the same. Jalen Mayfield, I don't want him to be set up for failure. I want him to succeed. And Jalen Mayfield, I just feel, needs a little bit of, you know, help. He needs a mentor. And that's not a bad thing, by the way, because it's life. Would you rather figure out something on your own and take a long time to develop? Or would you rather <laughs> learn from a, an experienced teacher and know what you're doing right away? That is what I want Jalen Mayfield to do. We need to get him some mentors. And why not get these really good guards in the NFL? They're veterans. They're really good. Uh, and yeah, I, I would really like Jalen Mayfield to learn from these guys. And then the same could kind of be said about this right tackle, um, Morgan Moses from the New York Jets. This is kind of for Caleb McGarry's sake. He is a little inconsistent and I would like for him to succeed in Atlanta. So let's get him a little bit of a mentor. Um, and if you also have veterans, this could really help out Matt Ryan, who's about to enter uh, 37, I believe, 37 years old, 36, somewhere around there. He's in his late 30s, and uh, I think he would like a great O-line. So uh, all of these players on the O-line, it's not even just to mentor these uh, younger offensive linemen we have, but also if you want to win now with Matt Ryan, you need an offensive line. So get offensive linemen, maybe. And now on to my most uh, anticipated group to go over here, the wide receivers, and I feel pretty good about these. The first one is DJ Chark from Jacksonville. We're all pretty familiar with him. Uh, he is a good receiver now. He is a little injury prone-ish, but uh, you know, he's a good player and uh, I would really love to see him on this squad. Now, this is not relevant at all. I just kind of hope it comes true. Uh, DJ Chark was on my Madden mobile team and he was like this next level Calvin Johnson and he was only like an 80 overall. Anytime I had this 99 or uh, however high this other wide receiver was, I never put him in the game. I kept DJ Chark in because he just was that good. I, that was not relevant at all, but I'm basically saying I want that to come true. <laughs> but anyway, the next player is Adam Humphreys. Now, he's not who he once was, but I do still think he could be a good player here. Obviously, he's worked with Arthur Smith, and uh, he, maybe he just needs some better quarterback play. He had to work with Jameis Winston and Ryan Tannehill. Now, Ryan Tannehill is not a bad quarterback, and Jameis Winston was not the best quarterback in Tampa Bay, at least, but why not just get yourself a more consistent quarterback in Matt Ryan? And as everyone knows, apparently every wide receiver that comes to Atlanta is good. <laughs> so Adam Humphreys, Maybe you could sign him to like a one or two year deal. We don't have to keep him for that long, but just some sort of veteran presence that could help. Speaking of veteran presence, I actually did mention this guy on Twitter and nobody talks about this guy, Jamison Crowder from the New York Jets. This is another guy that I feel has not really worked with a consistent quarterback. He had to work with the rookie Zach Allen, I mean, uh, uh, Zach Wilson, and then he had to work with Sam Darnold and Kirk Cousins is not bad, but he's also a little on and off, I guess you could say. And not, not, you know, he's a good quarterback. I think at best he is a good quarterback, but no one's really sitting here saying he's like, you know, uh, that great, I guess. So uh, why not just get him a veteran 
experienced, you know, great quarterback like Matt Ryan. And I know Kirk Cousins is a veteran at this point, but you got what I'm trying to say. Get him a quarterback like Matt Ryan and let's see what he does. Uh, and also, Jamison Crowder, look at what he's done in the NFL, not even just statistically, but also on film. He's been pretty consistent throughout the years, no matter what quarterback he's had. And he's also been on these really bad teams, and no matter what happens, he produces. So I would love to see Jamison Crowder. I think that is an underrated free agent that the Falcons could consider picking up here. And I kind of can see it happening, but we'll see. All right, and then the last two free agents here are running backs, but uh, I won't spend too much time on this because if you mention literally any running back ever, I would think it's some sort of great free agent signing because running backs are so easy to develop and they're so easy to find. But at the same time, there are some great running backs out there that are maybe a step ahead of everyone else that you would maybe like to have. Uh, now, this next running back maybe I don't think is this great, great running back, but he's good, is Sony Michelle from the Los Angeles Rams, uh, the two-time Super Bowl champion. Uh, and I promise you this is not because he's a former Georgia Bulldog and, oh, we need more dogs. No, that is not what I'm trying to say, though it would be kind of interesting to see if he's motivated to play for the state of Georgia because of that. But anyway... Sonny Michel is actually a more physical running back than you might think. And uh, he's, you know, just he, he's a, a really good blocker as well. And the Falcons haven't really had a good blocking running back in a while. And I think we would kind of like that. So a bigger running back that can block well, I think the Falcons would appreciate that. And then the last player on here is Marlon Mack. And he has been forgotten about simply because of Jonathan Taylor, but kind of like Sonny Michel, he is a big back, so, you know, he can bruise through people, and he's more athletic and just an overall better running back, in my opinion, than Sony Michelle. Uh, so don't forget about Marlon Mack. We could use that guy. But those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Other than that, I will see you guys this Tuesday with a video at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Love and appreciate you all for the support, and as always, rise up.